I was involved in this along with some collaborators, um, uh, Edward Battelard, who is based, actually based in London, did, did the lion's share of the work on this. And my colleagues, uh, Toby Ayer, Tarek Al galilee from Denmark also did um, a lot of uh, good work on this. The, the idea behind this project was to look at um, the, various, um, the, the various published data on intensity of RCHOP in patients with previously untreated large cell lymphoma. I guess the area of um, uncertainty was um, exactly um, how, how old do you take patients with uh, frontline large cell lymphoma before you um, can drop um, doses of the key ingredients, cyclophosphamide, doxorubicin, and vincristine, without compromising outcome. And Toby and, and others have previously done um, retrospective or real-world data sets um, are looking at this. And uh, we, we, uh, we actually looked at uh, quite a large number of studies um, in which the relative dose intensity of RCHOP was actually reported and, uh, and looked at across, across the published work, where can you actually draw that cut point? And the bottom line is that uh, RCHOP is certainly um, a deliverable in patients up to the age of 80 without comorbidities. And uh, as a consequence, I think if you, if you have um, patients who are, who are um, up to 80 years of age and are otherwise reasonably fit, um, the intent should be to try and deliver full dose RCHOP. Once you get beyond 80 years of age, um, it, it, it's um, pretty pretty reasonable to reduce the dose intensity. And the most accepted way to do that is the R uh, mini chop um, protocol. And um, the findings of our review were certainly consistent with this, which is pretty much accepted as uh, standard clinical practice in most places in the world.